Welcome. We are going to study Merit Vacations worldwide, getting into the financial analysis. Now, with an impressive upside expected by the analysts over the next year, and with strong signs of recovery post-pandemic, my question is, can Marriott Vacations worldwide be a hidden gem in our investment portfolio? Now, as we navigate through the earnings predictions, we'll look at the credit ratings and a few other critical factors. I want you to join me on this exciting journey as we find out whether or not this would be a good fit for the portfolio. Okay, so here we have VAC stock forecast and price targets. Now, there's only a small coverage here of five analysts, and if we look here at the, the top analysts, they have a price target of $193 compared to the current price rating. This gives us around a 52% upside expected by the analysts over the next year. Now, I'm here on Fast Graphs, and a couple of key points to look at. The S&P credit rating is a BB- minus. So not as high as I normally like to see, and the, the long-term debt-to-capital ratio is about 65%, which seems reasonably high. But if we look historically at what's happened, there was relatively steady and stable growth here in the, the earnings over the 2011 to 2019. But unexpectedly, with the COVID pandemic, we had a massive crash, and then we've had a bounce back in earnings. Now, if we sort of looked and joined up these lines, we'd sort of see that it's a continuation there with the exception, really, of the, the COVID uh, crash there. Now, despite the COVID crash, the, the prices uh, were kind of disconnected at that point from the uh, earnings we had at the start of the COVID crisis, a, a very strong decrease in the overall price, followed by quite a strong bounce back. Now, that very, very, very much came a lot earlier than the bounce back in the earnings. If we expected prices to trace these earnings, then visually we'd expect prices now at about 12 times to be jumping up to about 25 times, which suggests that prices could potentially double, and this might occur fairly quickly. Now, a couple of other important points. Dividend yield is relatively low at 2.27%, and the dividend has increased. It was increasing quite steadily before the pandemic, as we can see there in that bottom row cut during the pandemic and then doubled post-pandemic as the earnings were covered and then basically more than doubled again with analysts expecting more muted uh, change out in the future. Now I want to have a quick look at what the analysts think. Now because I use the analyst estimates quite heavily on fast graphs it's always useful to understand how accurate they are and how Good the underlying guidance is from the company to the analysts and how easy it is to estimate the future forecasts and, and potential for this company. So we have here the adjusted operating earnings for the company. We can see perhaps not unexpectedly in 2020 a, a big miss and uh, probably not unexpected again in 2021. We can see generally over uh, one year forward and two year forward the, the company does a good job of providing analysts with estimate information about the company guidance, about how it's going to be likely to progress over time, as well as those wider macroeconomic environments. And the two-year forward is usually the company actually beats analyst estimates, which is usually a good sign. There are some misses here, although I think when we look two years forward, that's a 2020 and 2021 that was missed, which is probably not surprising given the, the depth and challenges of the company and many other companies that they were facing during the COVID pandemic and immediately after. Now I can also switch to the, the sales as another metric. And here we see a, a much shorter lived pandemic situation here in 2020. And again, the, the little bit longer effect here for the 2020 and 2021 as well, where the rebound I think was perhaps a little bit weaker than analysts may have anticipated out. But generally here as well, for the, the one year and the two year, fairly good estimates here provided by analysts for the sales value. Now I'm going to switch back to the uh, operating earnings and I want to have a quick look at the forecasting calculators using the normal. Now remember that we're bouncing back after the COVID pandemic and in fact as we've bounced up and earnings have been increasing through 2020, we've seen the actual prices begin to decline, giving us a bit of a disconnect. In fact prices have generally declined while earnings have been increasing again at a much more muted pace though. Now, as we look here, we can see in 2023, 2024, and 2025, roughly 10% increase in earnings per year, which is always encouraging to see. 
and we can see over the last six months that the analyst expectations for earnings have been revised downwards a little bit, but they're relatively steady and relatively stable. Now, I'm going to, to take to the end of 2024 because we have seven analysts reporting out that far, and the earnings are correct. The earnings estimates are correct till the end of 2024, and prices return to the normal PE ratio of about 17 times we're likely to get a 44% annualised rate of return. Now on fast graphs, one of the options that I do like in a premium account is the ability to jump in to look at some of the financials for the company. Now one of the most important for me is whether or not the free cash flow is greater than the dividend. In other words, after paying a lot of their other costs and expenses, do they have enough actual cash left over to pay their dividend? Now we have here in green the free cash flow to equity per share, and in purple, the dividends per share. Now, as we, they started paying dividends, we've seen, even though there's been a couple of times that they're about the same, such as in 2018, generally there's been far, far greater free cash flow per share than there has been a dividends being paid out. And that gives me some confidence that they'll be able to both continue to pay their dividend as well as increase that dividend with time. Now that is when we're using the earnings estimate, but we do know that the sales are possibly slightly easier to forecast. Now again, if we take the end of 2024 and we look at these estimates for the, the sales, we can see, and in fact, they actually appear to be much more stable than the estimates of the earnings. They haven't been revised uh, downwards in the same way that the earnings have. In fact, in 2022 year over the six months, they were actually increased. But if we then take this till the end of 2024 and we look at this, we would have an increase there of about 78%. That's a combination of both dividends and capital appreciation or a total annualized rate of return of about 45%. Now, I think there's a, a level of speculation here. I'm not entirely happy with the S&P credit rating and the type of the industry. And of course, further health considerations and public health measures could clearly impact the the factors here for merit vacations worldwide and wider macroeconomic climatic changes could also impact on the company but i'm very curious about what you think is this a really interesting opportunity it certainly seems to have some really strong upside potential here but does it put you off with the overall weakness of the company and the relatively low dividend yield what other factors make this a less attractive opportunity for you perhaps I have to be honest, I don't have any investments in the hotel resorts and cruise line sub-industry. So for me, this would be a little bit of a change and perhaps some diversification. Hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think.